In his book Laboratory Life, Bruno Latour aligns with a strong program in the sociology of science. The book argues that scientific work involves creating and maintaining fictional accounts that can sometimes become established as real objects. It criticizes functionalist views in sociology and philosophy of science which rely on concepts like norms, rewards and ideas. Drawing from a wide range of literature in British, French and American sociology of science, the book is based on Latour's on-site research from 1975 to 1977 in Roger Gulman's laboratory at the Salk Institute. Latour and Wulger explore how a particular fact, thyrotropin releasing factor, with a well-defined molecular structure was scientifically established. This fact is now available for use as a precise tool in unrelated research programs, even though it originated from different programs between 1962 and 1970, earning a Nobel Prize in 1977 for the laboratory leaders. Taking on the role of anthropologists observing a unique community, the authors resist simply accepting scientists' own explanations of their work. They challenge the distinction that scientists value, but the authors reject. The separation between technical and social aspects. The resulting ethnography of the laboratory emphasizes the importance of specific objects and processes, such as documents, inscriptions, and operations on statements, which lead to the creation of valuable products like scientific papers. The authors suggest that scientific production resembles interpretation more than pure discovery. The book also skillfully applies Gaston Bacalod's concept of phenomeno technology to analyze laboratory practices like bioassays as tools for recording information. According to the authors, laboratory machines encapsulate or materialize previously established statements that have already been organized into theory. Once a record is obtained and statements are analyzed to distinguish between facts and artifacts, the physical processes involved in creating these literary objects are set aside, seen as no longer relevant. Ideas then appear to replace material and social processes, and facts are thought to be uncovered. Latour and Wulger introduce six key concepts, construction, agonistic field, materialization or reification, credibility, circumstances or microfabrication and noise, which is the ratio of signal to noise or information. These tools help them investigate the intriguing paradoxes within scientific work. For instance, they point out that a constructed fact may seem unconstructed by anyone. Similarly, in the agonistic field of persuasive argumentation, Participants might believe they have not been convinced. When it comes to materialization, people might firmly assert that material considerations play only a minor role in the thought process. The authors carefully outline the specific moments and corresponding reversals in these situations. In their chapter on credibility, Latour and Volger present a theory linking capitalist credit and investment cycles to the dual aspects of scientific value, the economic and epistemological facets. They view the laboratory as a factory or workplace engaged in generating inscriptions, information and exchange values. They go beyond Bourdieu's concept of symbolic capital, connecting the laboratory to theories of circulation in a way that expands the meaning of the common phrase that's interesting. Latour and Wulger's accomplishment lies in their exceptionally detailed narrative rather than a mere declaration of belief in their social construction of facts. They wisely refrain from asserting an epistemological status for their own account that they deny to their informant's version. In fact, they emphasize the similarity between their text which organizes information from chaos and the biological explanation of life. Even the pages of a scientific paper and their text bear resemblance. They point out that there is no real distinction in the sources of credibility that both they and their informants can draw upon to challenge proposed statements.
The only distinction is that their informants have a laboratory while they themselves have a text. Ultimately, Latour and Wulger propose and perceive nothing more than a text. For those anticipating a deeper material analysis of scientific construction, the full potential of the project has yet to be realized.